Thank you very much, Mark. And he knows a few, few things about launches, too, I, I should add. I, I couldn't help but throw that in, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the product uh, so you can help understand why you have people like Mark and others talking about a chip like it's a big deal. Right? I mean, computer chips have been kind of boring lately. I mean, yeah, they're faster and they're always better, and the engineers that build them are doing wonderful things, but it's really incremental. It's faster, more cores, faster, more cores, and so forth. This is a completely different approach. So I'm gonna walk you through this. Bear with me for a few minutes. There's the, the product is called the Energy Core. Calzada Energy Core has four major components on, on, the, on the die. The first is an ARM quad-core Cortex processor. Is it blazingly fast? No. Is it fast enough? Yes. It's got a very large cache, four megabytes of L2 cache, and it's got a complete suite of DDR3 and DDR3L memory controllers that run up to the high rate of speed you'd expect, 1333. It's also got a fabric switch. Now, the fabric switch is probably what I know some analysts have called our secret sauce or our secret weapon. This is what really changes the, changes the game. Frankly, anybody with a decent set of engineers and some money can go get an ARM license and build a quad-core ARM processor. But to turn it into a server, you've got to be able to scale it, as Barry said. Scaling it with lots of Ethernet cables connected to top-of-rack switches, when you're talking about thousands of nodes, is a non-starter. That's not going to work. Right? So what you have to do is start fresh. The way we started fresh with is a distributed layer two switch called the Energy Core Fabric Switch. And I'll walk through a little more detail on that in just a moment. Full set of I.O. controllers. These are not the I.O. controllers you find on most ARM chips, like USB and LCD drivers that you would normally find for a consumer device. These are server class I.O. devices, SATA ports, Ethernet ports, okay? The kind of I.O. you need for, for high scale out computing. And finally, the Energy Core Management Engine. This is, think of this as a fifth processor that's run alongside the four ARM processors where your applications run, this processor is acting as a management controller. So let's talk the, the processor itself, the quad-core processor. It does have a fast memory control on it. it runs at 1333 and is 64-bit wide. Why is that important? Again, it's all about balance. The right amount of number of cores at the right frequency at a sufficient memory bandwidth. Frequency, by the way, initially is 1.1 gigahertz up to 1.4 gigahertz. Um, the focus here is on performance per watt. Now, three years ago, nobody was saying focus should even be on performance per watt. I I've been doing this since chips that most of us have forgotten about at previous companies. And the focus was always about one thing, right? It was always about price performance, price performance, price performance. That is great for a lot of applications, but not the applications we're focusing on. The applications we're focusing on are going to be all about throughput, all about bandwidth, okay? And there, you need a focus on performance per watt. It's extremely scalable. Uh, this is not a wimpy fabric, with all due respect to Google's marketing of wimpy cores. It's not a wimpy fabric. This is a brawny fabric at, at 80 gigabit fabric switch on every chip give you a feel for what that is, if you know what the 80 gigabit switch, an 80 gigabit switch, or say a 40 gigabit switch on top of a, of a top of rack switch, costs about $100,000 $100, today in the market. Okay, about $100,000 in the market. That wasn't a mistake, it's $100,000. That's on every one of our chips. Okay, why do we need so much bandwidth? Because we're gonna connect lots and lots of these together to build really big computer systems. And so you need the bandwidth so all that data can flow across that fabric be able to reach the transceivers or the storage devices, the ethernet, or other processing nodes. It, 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 it connects together with up to five 10 gigabit links. Five 10 gigabit links come off of each chip and connect to other chips or connect to an ethernet port. That ethernet port can be one gigabit or 10 gigabit. Now, the topology is, uh, we don't care what topology is. It's, we're topology agnostic. This is an important point because it allows partners like HP to design a solution that is focused on a specific set of workloads, right? I mean, a two, a two socket server is a two socket server, right? That's kind of the end of the discussion. 
But when you're talking about a fabric with five links and thousands of nodes, you could design a fabric that's optimized for bandwidth. You can optimize one, to design one that's optimized for latency. You can design a fabric that's optimized for redundancy and avail high availability, or any combination of those, a balance of those. Which means that you may end up seeing a server for Hadoop that doesn't look like a server for web serving. Okay, so you've got a tremendous amount of innovation that our partners can apply to this and really differentiate themselves in the marketplace, focus on the markets that make sense for them, and have competitive advantage. Uh, the fabric is transparent. While it sounds really exotic and everything, as far as your software is concerned, it's just an Ethernet driver. In fact, there's two Ethernet ports, it's from the software standpoint, two MAC addresses that behind which is this wonderful fabric. Software doesn't know anything about it, it's just standard Linux drivers. What this does for the customer is dramatic reduction in cost because you're eliminating all these top of rack switches, dramatic reduction in energy consumption, and dramatic reduction in overall complexity in building up a large high density server. So let's talk about it being smart. By smart means we're building in the intelligence. Well, intelligence means you gotta have a processor. This processor has a re dedicated real-time operating system running on a fifth processor, and that is doing your basic baseboard management control functionality. Turn the processor on, turn the processor off, boot the processor from this boot image, boot it remote, boot it local, all the stuff you'd expect a management controller to do. But then we take it, take it a step farther, it optimized the power consumption of the processor. There's 12 different power zones in the, on this chip and it's optimizing and turning them on and off to reduce the power even further than the five watts Barry mentioned. And then it goes one step farther. It optimizes the fabric. I mentioned these are 10 gigabit fabric links. Some of you might be thinking, well, I may not want or need the power to spend the power for a 10 gigabit link for a leaf node of this topology. That's fine. The, the management engine will identify that it doesn't need that much bandwidth and will turn it down. Turn it could run at one gigabit, two and a half gigabits, five gigabits, 10 gigabits, and come right back down as the bandwidth requirements lessen right back up as the bandwidth requirements increase and can do so in nanoseconds. Now, some of the supercomputing guys in the audience are going, oh man, I really want a deterministic fabric. That's not a problem. Just tell the management engine you want deterministic routing and deterministic bandwidth. So it's very, very flexible for all the different workloads that we'll be addressing. Um, there will be a test on this later. Now, this, the, the, as you can see, this is the block diagram and you can see all the the, the five 10 gigabit links off to the right. There are five SATA ports total, and there are four PCIe channels coming off the chip as well. This will all be in, this is all in a product brief that we have in the back of the room. You're welcome to take it with you. Just place an order on your way out, and you can take the product. Um, so let me do some competitive comparisons. I know this is somewhat dangerous, but, but I can't resist the temptation. This is all publicly available information. Uh, what I've done here is simply compare our part at two, two different parts, a two-core version and a four-core version. The two-core version has, has two cores, has a much smaller cache, and then no fabric switch, and we'll turn the management engine way down. That part runs at one and a half watts. One and a half watts. The, uh, let's compare that to an Intel Atom. An Intel Atom N570, the most recent introdu in, inter in, recently introduced Atom part, um, positioned by a, a, a Silicon Valley company as a, as a server product, so we'll compare against that. The total power consumption, by the time you build up a chipset, okay, which means it's got to be able to do I.O., you know, it's got to be able to have, you know, basic functionality. Uh, that chipset for the Atom is 22.6 watts. The comparable energy core is 1.9 watts. So now let's take a look at something, that would be like a microserver, right? Uh, frankly, what's much more interesting is people really doing big, solving big problems at big scale. So let's take a look at, at uh, the hyperscale marketplace. In that marketplace, you see the energy core with four cores, the full fabric switch and the full cache available to it, and it burns 3.8 watts. 3.8 watts, no other, no other power is required because everything's included, there's no other chips to attach to it, you're done. That burns 3.8 watts compared to a Xeon Two core, 1220L, that's a 2.4 gigahertz part, I believe. 
That's a 34.9 watts versus our 3.8 watts. It burns nine times more power. Now, a lot of people, when they look at the ARM server store, they say, yeah, but they didn't talk about performance. I saw a blog recently, and I'm sure it wasn't Paul Ottolini who made the blog, but somebody claiming to be Paul Ottolini posted this blog on Yahoo's um, finance website. They said, yeah, it's one-tenth the power, but it's less than one-tenth the performance. Eh, got, your, got your facts wrong there. Um, so what I did was I normalized for performance using available benchmarks. We will make benchmarks available for our product in the next three months or so. And then we can validate this with the benchmarks we publish through industry, industry standard bodies. Based on normalized performance, very conservative, we would estimate, for example, you'd need three energy core chips to equal one 5620, which is the most popular chip right now in hyperscale computing, a Xeon on the left. The next chip is the N570 Atom. The next chip is the two core Xeon 1220L. Total chipset power divided by the performance. So this is all neutralized for performance. And as you can see, we have six times better performance per watt than the, e, the Xeon 1220L. We have eight times better performance per watt than Atom. And we have 10 times better power performance per watt compared to the, e, the, um, the uh, ES5620. So normalized for performance. OK, pretty impressive, pretty impressive. So let's take another look at it. What I did here was use more realistic performance metrics. That last one was based on very conservative 3 to 1 ratio of Calzada versus a 5620 Xeon. Honestly, if, 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 if we're anything beyond 3 to 1, that's not a target market for us. right? So if you throw Linpack at it, that's not a target market for us. We're not 3 to 1. We're, we're much worse. But that's OK. That's not where we're focused. This is focused on the real workloads where the ratios are much lower. So for Hadoop, we're probably 1.5 to 1. For web serving, we're maybe 2 to 1, maybe 2.5 to 1. So using those kind of ratios, I then calculated what's the power savings, what's the space savings, and what's the overall cost of ownership savings over three years of, let's say, a 1,000 node cluster. And you can see the savings in power, space, and money are really dramatic. And the savings are across the board. It's not just the server. I get, I, get, I get a giggle when I see somebody say, well, who cares about a lower power processor chip? That's only one-third the power of a server. Well, OK, if you, take a, if you take the approach that we've taken, and that one chip is the server and the network, it starts making a huge difference across the data center. 